Hello, my name is Bud, and my dog does not have an email address. And I'm Galen, and this impeachment doesn't matter at all. I think that was perfect. This is bald philosophy. <laughs> I think Yay. that was a really solid first intro. Okay. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll iron it out, we'll iron it I have been living in Venezuela. I've been uh, making a lot of drawings and paintings lately. And I uh, just got back from a five-day trip uh, to Isla Margarita. Oh, where, what country is that? (laughs) Venezuela. Oh, it's in Venezuela. Okay. Yes. Wait, hold on. Gilbert, it is the property of the Venezuelan, the, the people's, the, the Venezuelan oh God, beautiful. Republic of Bolivia, Boliv- Bolivar, something like that. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, uh, tons, tons of cool beaches. And I went there uh, with people who know the area and who I can trust. So they just did everything. It was awesome. That sounds good. That sounds fun. Wait, what did you do there? Did you just go swimming? You just went to the beach? Um, We went to the beach. Uh, We visited uh, some like historic landmarks and stuff. I mean, we did like vacation stuff. All right, cool. But it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, I've got pictures and videos and stuff. Yeah, it's amazing. I'm excited to see it, but I guess I probably never will since it's in Venezuela. And we no, have- you guys are gonna come visit. You oh, guys are gonna God. come visit. It, can I? Even oh come visit? shit! Because hey, I've world, got water. Know, My water just came on. Oh, so you need to take a break? No. No, I'm just letting you know. I can like flush my toilets now, so that, so that, uh, you know, the turds go down. Oh, oh, delightful. <laughs> okay, well, I'll get yeah. that out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, uh, uh, while you're flushing your toilet, I have been doing drag for four months now, five months now. And Galen, I didn't tell you this, but I did a amateur talent night, and I what? lost the oh. competition. <laughs> but I was great. Yeah, you I, sure did. I was really great. I was really great. There were eight contestants, and I was second place. Oh, oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. That's and there great. Were some some drag queens that knew how to dance in the talent competition so i was like i charmed the crowd more than the people that knew how to dance except one one person that yeah looks better than me yeah but you're you're good at um at charming the crowd i've yeah uh, yes what my goals are for this podcast um i think we always kind of wanted to make a podcast thing together and so uh here here's our first first thing that's true well so our goals we we went to art school together 
we went to art yeah. school together and you moved away um but we made art together remotely um and so this feels a little bit like a continuation of that remember that time that we read that zizek book together out loud on your couch yeah it was awesome this is our um philosophy book club and so we're yes. going to try to read really dense philosophy that's maybe a little bit over our head and break yeah. it down in, a, in an approachable way. You definitely watched this video, which is um, yeah. linked in the description. It's a lecture called... I've seen it Objects, more than once. Objects in the Arts. Um, and it was delivered to the Institute of Contemporary Arts. And this lecture is actually from 2014. And it's to an art school. So it's yeah. a little bit friendly yeah. for us since we're artists. But then he really does get into some heavier topic i mean i don't know it was really mm -hmm. dense for me to listen to so i'm excited to be able to yeah. revisit all of the ideas that he expressed in written format in the book okay so what yeah, are, what are your impressions since you watched it very freshly recently twice what are your general impressions of of the video uh my general impression uh, uh of the video was that he has um, this uh, really interesting way of thinking about art. And um, I really like the way he breaks it down into um, this sort of dichotomy between knowledge and non-knowledge uh, or, or a, bi a binary, a binary between not knowledge and non-knowledge. And, and there's sort of uh, the disciplines of non-knowledge, which is like art and philosophy and then there's the disciplines of knowledge, which is like um, science and uh, maybe history, although that kind of crosses over and stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah. I, I didn't understand what you meant, but now I think I understand what you mean by non-knowledge. Um, but uh, so one of the things that he talks about with... <clears throat> Um, art and even philosophy which seems I think it's easy to understand art as something that produces non-knowledge like maybe it produces um, sensory experiences or emotion or like something else besides just direct knowledge but um, philosophy he says is actually the love of knowledge and not actually yes. um, the production of knowledge yes exactly yeah so that's um, pretty interesting I, yeah i think he's quoting plato uh when he's talking about that oh yeah uh, um and uh and he, and he also goes into the the uh the word itself um which is like philo sophie i think philo is love and then sophie is wisdom or something like that oh right so technically or very like uh, concretely philosophy means the love of wisdom rather than something like that yeah the acquisition or, or the lo the right. love of wisdom or the love of knowledge i think in in our case we're not getting specific enough to make a distinction between the two so i think they're just going to be synonymous for this conversation the love of yeah. knowledge yeah 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 right on um yeah. that's cool and i also really loved the way that he talked about um art as close to philosophy instead of being close to science um yeah and, and he i think a lot of people like defend philosophy by saying that it's it's actually really close to science and it's actually like yes where, where science was born um yeah like the original scientists were actually philosophers but he says that it's mm -hmm. actually it's actually closer to art um, in that science is always progressing towards like making something better or understanding something more and more. Yes. Whereas philosophy isn't always about that. It's about making something that understands the time period that you're in. So you're never disproving the old philosophy. Yeah. You're just making new philosophy right. that's relevant. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and I think that like, <clears throat> you can think of it in terms of, uh, just take any piece of technology, you know, like jet engines, 
have gotten you know more efficient, more powerful, uh, lighter materials. Uh, they, they spin faster now. They can go higher altitudes, whatever. Uh, but um, you would never talk about art, any kind, any part of art, any part of the field of art like that. You would never say painting has um you know gotten more and more efficient and artists have you know uh <laughs> you know whatever they've gotten artists better gotten at making more more canvas <laughs> frames <laughs> uh or 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 whatever no yeah no absolutely yeah you would never use those terms of like I don't know. I mean, like artists do borrow some science terms. Like we talk about research and we talk about practice and experimentation and mm -hmm. even like material experimentation. And I think it's, it's like kind of bold to say um, that in, in many ways art is, I, I mean, I mean, art has to sort of like defend itself as being practical and useful. And in, in a lot of ways, so does, so does philosophy. It has to defend itself. And the way that we usually defend ourselves is by saying that we're kind of scientific in our approach. But he's mm -hmm. like super boldly saying, no, we're actually not scientific at all in our approach. But that's actually the good thing about philosophy and art yeah. that understands things that science doesn't understand. Yes. Um, or what, well, and, and he thinks that art is closer to philosophy because it gets at the way things actually exist, which is, or, or it, it follows a trajectory towards objects, um, that is, uh, is not what science is because science kind of always tries to approach things directly. This is, uh, wood or this this granite has these minerals in it and it's and it weighs this much or whatever um right. and art's just not interested in that stuff right so I, I he talks about like two different forms of abstraction that science is or not not mm -hmm. um i don't know if it's abstraction but it's like it's not actually defining reality he says um directly in the way that it thinks it's defining reality directly so he calls one of those uh, undermining, uh -huh. right one of those is yes. undermining, and that's when you yes, think about yes, yes, yes. there's this tiny particle that makes up everything or you're, you just described it as like molecules or something um so we would think about molecules or atoms or um like the small things that make up everything in existence and if we think about everything is devolving from that one pure material, then it ignores the idea that like, yes, a person is made up of a lot of molecules, but a person is also its own thing. Um, it's its own real yes, object. Yes, exactly. Right? <laughs> and then the other yeah. one is, is the opposite of that, which is the overmining. Overmining. Yeah. And that was like, everything fits into a category so you can sort of arrive at the reality of objects by talking about characteristics or something that group objects together but then that yeah. has the reverse effect which is that it doesn't acknowledge that individual objects are still yeah. real discrete objects um but then there's um the worst one and that's duo mining Oh shit! <laughs> I don't know what that is. Okay, and that's when you—that's when you do both at the same time. <laughs> and he talks about, um, oh my god, what is this guy's name? He talks about, uh, oh man, I'm gonna forget his name. Anyway, he talks sure. about this guy. Uh, yes, Latour. Yes. <laughs> I got you, boo. <laughs> Damn it. Yes, Latour. he talks about Latour. Is it, I, I believe he accuses Latour of being a duo miner because yeah. of his theory that um, all 
all things are only uh, what they're doing at that moment. Yeah. So, okay. This believe- is what I wrote. I don't, I don't understand this and this is getting a little over my head. So maybe it's something that we'll learn later, but I wrote okay. dual mining Bruno Latour. Primary reasoning is that everything is relational, though. There's also plasma. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 He ran. Plasma okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because okay. Latour ran into Latour ran into a problem with his theory, um, which he bills, he bills his theory as a theory of change. And it actually turned out to be the opposite because if a thing is only what it's doing is if a thing is only ever what it's doing at that moment, then there's no reason for that thing to change. It, it, the, it will never change. Okay. So he he disagrees with undermining, overmining, and dual mining. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so we'll get more into that when we when we like are reading the book, hopefully, and it'll make hopefully dual mining. Yes, a little we bit should leave it there. We should we should yes, we should leave it there with Latour running into trouble with his theory, and the plasma is um, undermining. It's his undermining solution to it because. Um, everything emerges from the plasma. Right. I, um, okay, so this is my general impression before we dive back into arts um, and object-oriented ontology, but that Graham Harmon is super, a super sweetie pie. Um, He's so, (laughs) he's so genuine. Yeah. He's so, like, wonderful to all of these, like, students and, I think it's, I think the lecture is presented to like freshmen at this uni- arts university in, um, in England. I don't know where it is. It's in London. It's in London. Yeah. Okay, I don't know where it is. Um, and, but, um, and, I've... and he's so patient with all the questions. He's so patient with the faculty questions that are like a little bit more tedious. And every time he yeah. insults, not insults, but every time he disagrees with Bruno Latour, he, is like Bruno Latour's a genius. He like really compliments. Him. Oh yeah, yeah. No, he he really does think Bruno Latour is one of the most important thinkers of our age because because Bruno Latour kind of unlocked shit for Harmon. Yeah. Um, so every well, even he he describes someone else's. Um, I don't know. There's Jane Bennett. He quotes her: "The world is a throbbing hole." Yeah, Jane he, Bennett. He she, her monism. But he no, he, he doesn't. He's like such a he comes close fanboy. Yeah, he's such a fanboy of like all of the philosophers that he mentions, and it's kind of infectious. It really does make me want to like read what? work by these different thinkers. It's actually it's a really exciting time in philosophy right now. There's all kinds of stuff um, exploding, uh, uh, all kinds of new theories. There's um, uh yeah cool <laughs> that sounds great i'm excited, I, I, I'm excited well, there's no the we, we should, i'm not gonna go off on the list <laughs> well I, i'm i'm excited to explore it after we make it through object-oriented ontology yes um but okay so back to the lecture um and back to what a 1950s not even a philosopher, but an art critic named Clement Greenberg. Um, I think he really makes mm. this lecture like art specific for this audience, which is a great thing for mm-hmm. us. Um, but um, so Clement Greenberg was, uh, who was he? Do you want to <laughs> tell um, us about his theories? I don't know a whole lot about him. Just more of like, if you're at all well read in the arts, you know this stuff. But Clement Greenberg was a, a critic, um, a, a modernist uh, critic, and he uh, sort of had the most complete uh, modernist theory at, at kind of the beginning of the 20th century in America, in the United States. Um, sure. Yeah. And, and he was a brute positivist. 
he thought that if your stuff is flat, then you need to emphasize the flatness. And if it's like a sculpture, then you need to emphasize its sculpturalness and stop doing realism. Yeah, um, I think that um, the, one of the ways that we talked about it, even in high school, was art for art's sake. Um, yeah, but when people say that in high school, they don't know. What it I don't think they. I don't think they do. But um, so painting should be <laughs> um, painting should be about painting, um, and so yeah. it's, it's colorful it's, and flat. It's about the um, characteristics that are specific to painting and mm. not specific to anything else. Um, yeah. So any painting that tells a story, a narrative, any painting that delivers, mm -hmm. even um, to some extent, like a philosophy or an ethics or something, it's like mm -hmm. um, all of that is outside of the realm of what a painting should do. Um, yes. And that was Greenberg's big contribution. Um, yeah. So he didn't like mixed media, or I guess um, artists that rebelled against abstract expressionism, which was Clement Greenberg's baby movement, um, started doing mixed media yeah. paintings. They started doing mm -hmm. um, figurative work. They started doing um, performance art. They started um, doing yeah. sculptures that were about interacting with the sculpture. So those and were like points of rebellion from Greenberg. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and also he kind of um he kind of failed to escape politics too, I think, because in all his uh uh dealing it, it, like he was a part of a of a, a CIA operation, I believe, a, a, okay, to now you're invent. Crazy. What are you talking about? And Ameri CIA no, 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 no. It was um um uh there's something like a name, something, a name, something like Operation 22 Crows or something like that. I don't know. Uh, I think it's I think it's real. I think he was a part of a CIA operation to invent an American style of painting. It was a, a cultural sort of. Oh, uh, you're uh, right. Oh, my God. Okay, okay, OK. Yeah. I was like, this is he, not your being like, like he, your conspiracy. No, theorists. no, no. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. No, sure. I think, th and that's generally common knowledge. Like, that's not yeah. even a secret thing. No, I, I know what you're talking um, about. Yeah, because the, the cultural so, center of the world for so long was Paris. Um, and yeah, America and he turned it into like, New York. Bitch, we want it to be New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so then he did that. Jimmy Greenberg, yeah, it became New yeah. York. Okay, yeah. so he, um, so as a result, Greenberg is a villain in contemporary art um and specifically mm -hmm. because he sort of banned politics he banned talking about identity so obviously mm -hmm. in like the feminism of of after the 50s and 60s yeah um and even the civil rights movement and even like queer art and things that came after that people were like no mm -hmm. art should be all about politics or art should be all about identity or all of these things should be what yeah art is about. sure um yeah and yeah. also also uh, no go ahead go ahead well in, in, so in in grad school i asked one of my professors i i was like man i really love abstract expressionism i wish there was a way to rescue it from this like asshole Clement Greenberg and my professor was like there's no way just let it go but I think that's kind of what Graham Harmon is proposing in in parts of this yeah talk, how to how to rescue abstract yeah. expressionism so he says Greenberg the he doesn't say Greenberg is right he says the critics of Greenberg are wrong because they want everything to be relational they want everything to be uh yeah. site specific um time specific right um, specific to even the like people involved with the work um temporarily yeah. specific so um he says there, there harman yeah harman's problem yeah. Is, is that you there is an essence to art there is an essence to painting but you cannot ever know that and greenberg's um fatal flaw was that he tried to know those essences right it, in, in is this, a way, is this it, 
sort yeah, of that makes sense in a, in a way they're like both right he's like of course object changes depending i mean an art object changes depending on its relations of course politics sure change an art object of course those people and their critique of greenberg are kind of right but that shouldn't say that there isn't something of an art object that survives even without that context there's something that that mm -hmm. is discreet that is painterly about this painting um that is still strong yeah. enough to withstand different relationships to the painting there's still something discreet yeah and separate about the painting that survives which right. is interesting which is cool <laughs> yeah um it, it's um, yeah because it's um um and and you can kind of start to recognize the his operation that he uh uh graham Harmon's kind of performance in, in in that argument because what he's doing is he's kind of like uh secularizing the medium specificity of art almost or or, or something like that Okay. Or, or it's not it's not secularizing it, but he what he he's like unmooring it um, from the idea that uh, it's um, Clement Greenberg's idea that it's like these physical characteristics that uh, uh, dictate the essence of the of the medium. Yeah. And, yeah. and and I don't think Harmon would. Harmon is saying no. That's not what determines it. Um, he, he, you're, he he thinks he's kind of like trying to get at the essence of art mediums the wrong way. What do you think object-oriented ontology? I know we just started looking at, well, you've been looking at it for a while, but I just started looking at it. What do you think, uh, can you like define object-oriented ontology? Uh, In uh, one word. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Our blower raspberry. Well, yeah, that's, that's fair. Um, that's like relational, but also. Uh, uh, <laughs> Well, uh, object-oriented ontology is um, uh, I like I like how Graham Harmon identifies it. It's a non-modern theory of everything. Um, so, and and he groups himself with uh, writers like Latour, and there are others, and I I can't remember their names, but um, oh, uh, Timothy Morton is another uh object oriented ontologist and okay, he Bogo. focuses he focuses on um on uh uh biodiversity issues issues of biodiversity and climate catastrophe mostly from what i've read okay him. um uh okay so but what is object oriented ontology Oof. Non-modern theory, theory of everything. Of everything. <laughs> yeah. But what, he, but what they're saying, what they're saying in object or in ontology is, is simple, that everything is an object. A thought is its own discrete object. Um, and uh, just, and like, even, just like a, a brick is an object. Make-believe things yes. are objects. Dragons, an object. dragons, and yeah, dragons and witches and uh, uh, you know, fake news. They're all objects. Yes, got it. And they all are withdrawn. They all uh, 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 are are shy and um, hide most of uh, what most of what they are that, that, you know, like you only see glimpses of objects. Um, and I, 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 
to take it just a little bit further, I really like um, Timothy Morton's book, Hyper Objects. And he, he builds his, his, his program in that book is to come up with a way to talk about climate change, basically. And so he's talking about climate change as a kind of a hyper object. And so um, the way, and, and, but, but, and this is a way to think of all objects except in, in in this specific way climate change is withdrawn from us because it's too big it's way too big for us to for our senses to deal with it um and so we get glimpses of like a giant uh you know like an increase in tornadoes and also the where tornadoes happens shifts in the United States, for instance, that's a real thing. Or um, the the latest hurricane that wrecked the Bahamas, um, that is a, a, a just like seeing like the claw of the beast, you know? But that's all we see of it. We never see the whole thing. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm and, excited. And, and, and that's for... also how all objects are. <laughs> I'm excited to get <laughs> I'm excited that everything is an object, um, including this yeah. podcast, Bald Philosophy. Bye, Galen. Me too. All right, <laughs> bye. good.